on Hulu I watched from 1963 from Russia with love this is regarded as one of the better James Bond films among the very best like a top five by many people I think Roger Ebert liked this one quite fondly um, I watched a whole lot of James Bond movies again and I'm trying to recall the details so sorry if this gets a little sketchy um, I noticed that in this one we don't have the Maurice Bender titles instead and this will continue with Goldfinger you have like lightning shined on women in provocative kind of uh, ways and, and then a they just sort of project the titles onto their bodies all right and you don't really have a theme here uh, you, it's just instrumental but then during the movie you hear from Russia with love okay there you go um there, this one starts out you see James Bond walking through this like hedge maze in a garden out in front of some estate and some guys chasing him and it's uh, Robert Shaw from Jaws and he catches up with him chokes him out with this watch uh, garrote thing uh, strangles him and then everybody turns on these lights and say hey good job uh, but uh, it was just, just a test the guy had a mask on it and it didn't it, it was strong car he must have like some makeup on it'll look a little different I'm guessing and uh, anyhow uh, we didn't have our title bit and so you, you don't have James Bond kicking ass in the beginning and many of it, many of the early ones seem to go that way all the new James Bonds it's like how much ass can James Bond kick before the title but it wasn't like that back in the day and then there you go with your title sequence we then hear word uh, from this chess master he just won like some world championship in chess he's a Spectre agent he's talking to the boss of Spectre Blofeld I think he is unnamed here you just gotta see this guy stroking this cat and he's talking about fighting fish and how they'll take out well they'll they'll win by letting the other two exhaust themselves so what they're doing is they're gonna play uh, Russia against the British I, guess, I suppose here they're gonna say hey we've got uh, a Russian agent uh, in our what one of our basically the inspiration for Frau Farbisna is a defector from Russia she's with Spectre however people don't know about this and she's gonna have the secretary relay information try to hook up with James Bond under the guidance of picking up the electric decoder and MI6 is like hey James Bond this girl's crazy about you she wants to defect to Russia and uh, give you this she's gonna bring us this uh, decoder you need to go meet up with her and uh, I think they may have said turkey yeah oh man my nose is running this is gonna be shitty so Bond heads over there meets up with this guy who is, has like a shitload of lines for a Bond helper in a movie uh, I think his name was Karam Bay I'm just gonna call him Bay and so he, he has like this uh, spy set up ring sort of situation where he, he's like the guy to talk to he's within my six here and they are spying on the Russians the Russians spy on them but then Spectre agents take out one of the Russian spies and now they've got a cold war boiling over there uh, he helps Bond but they have to go into this gypsy camp and there's this chick these two chicks who have to fight each other and during this he gets interrupted uh, by Spectre agents trying to take out Bond and uh, interesting thing here is uh, one of the girls fighting shows up in Thunderball as Paula Bond's assistant in that movie for a period of time anyhow um, you, you also hear this bit of music for the first time during the gypsy fight where it's like do 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 and that's something that you hear uh, on occasion in James Bond films starring Sean Connery and I think uh, inspired some uh, stuff for Austin Powers.
if not completely used again in Austin Powers. It sounds very familiar in that regard too. Anyways, uh, Bond gets aboard this train with the the uh, Russian gal. I forgot the character's name. I, th I think she was like Miss Universe. So they were just like, okay, just cast like the hottest girl for all possible. She does a pretty decent job. She's not a useless Bond girl. She helps a bit. But she, she's basically a normal girl, the secretary of type. They actually do get this actual decoder, which Spectre was going to take from them. You have some very, I'm going to call this, from Russia with love, Hitchcock much. Because this is a very Alfred Hitchcock-esque Bond movie. Uh, quite the departure from many others in the series. A lot of time is spent on the train conversing. There's a lot of uh, underhanded spy stuff occurring and not so much action spectacle. I mean, you still get a little bit of that. I'm just saying that most of this movie is working some kind of intellectual gambit. Uh, this guy, Robert Shaw, uh, overhears Bond doing his code phrase to an agent, and he takes him out, takes his briefcase, which is a trick briefcase. Q showed up at the beginning of the movie, and this was the first appearance of Desmond Lunell. Probably said that wrong as Q. Of course, uh, M and Money Penny were there in Doctor No, but this is the first time that Q Branch is represented by the Q that we all know and love from the classic series. And he had had this trick briefcase, has knives that come out of it, uh, secret compartments for gold, and uh, explosive if opened wrong. Well, he realizes Robert Shaw's bad, tricks him into opening up the briefcase, explodes on him, fights him in the train, takes him out. Uh, I think he, he throws him from the train or something. Uh, that's kind of a Bond move, is to throw people from trains. So, uh, he gets out of the train where, uh, where the only place he knew his contact had like a vague idea of where to go, but of course there's Spectre guys there to knock him off. Helicopter shows up, has to fight the helicopter. Pretty cool little sequence here for, uh, you know, early 60s Bond stuff. It's not too terribly over the top. Gets in a boat, has a boat chase. Some nice explosions there as he jettisons some fuel. Blofeld is knocking off the uh, chess guy for screwing this up. And then uh, Frau Forbisna has, has to take some responsibility. Then the movie she goes and meets up with Bond and the chick. And she's going to stab him with, these, with this knife that has poison, well venom. Which is it? <laughs> that, that can take a guy out. but. Uh, you know, the girl, she she seemed to be kind of loyal to her boss here, but then she shows that she's actually turned good, fights her a little bit, and I think, unless I'm mistaken, it actually shoots her. I, or, I think that's the case, that she kills uh, her boss here. She was a mean chick. And then uh, Bond had this, like, uh, I don't know, it wasn't 16 millimeters, it was like some kind of micro uh, mini film reel of this porn tape they inadvertently made that was going to be used to blackmail them. And uh, he throws that out at the end. You know, there, there's some, some nice stuff in this one. Uh, this was an intellectual Bond film, not too big. Uh, I, I do say this is very Hitchcock. You know, you have your MacGuffin that is never actually used, but it's the thing everybody wants. You know, a lot of double crossing kind of things happening here and there. Uh, this is an enjoyable Bond film. I think you can revisit this anytime you'd like. Now, I give From Russia With Love three and a half out of four stars.